Hey guys, welcome back to ButchCast. We're here with, uh, yeah, second episode of the year, man. I'm very excited for this one. I'm here with Yuri. Second episode? What do you mean, man? S- second episode. No, first time this year we're Shit. filming. All right. First time of 2022. First time? That's right. What the heck? A little... Uh, Dang. Yeah, that's right. That's right. First episode of 2022. Um, Boris has been shooting so much content, he, he just <laughs> forgets about it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Wait, see, I did, I did what I told my wife never to do. What? Uh, if I if I ever mess up in public or ever say something that she knows is a lie, not to correct me. Yeah, yeah. In public. Yeah. Because it's it, a good point. Yeah, not she, a good thing to do. She'll just roast you in the car ride home. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, that's fine, <laughs> it's man. It's better than in front of a crowd. Yeah. No, I don't care in private, but no, hundred percent, bro. Um, so today we want to talk about the comfort zone and how your dreams go and die in the comfort zone, um, and why it's super important to get out of it. What you got for this, Yuri? Your topic, man. You go ahead. Yeah. So I uh, I want to talk about the comfort zone because one thing I've realized in twenty twenty one was the more uncomfortable I get in business and in life the more fulfilled I get because I'm like completely reaching out of, out of like my old territory into a new territory. And again, it's exciting and it's like, it's powerful and it's like very scary and it's all these things, but it's like, it's growth again. Like it's, it's, you're growing as a person and it's always a good thing when you're growing. So, um, definitely want to talk about the comfort zone today. Yeah. Um, I, I just know in my life that, Anytime I'm faced with a decision, one's one's an easy path and one's a hard hard path. The hard path is is always the right choice to make, yeah. even though it's not the choice that I want to make usually. But um, I know that you know we can't if we want to be different than everyone else. You know, we want to succeed, we want to do all this stuff. Then we can't, you know, we can't live in comfort. We can't do what everyone else is doing and expect a different result. No, hundred so. percent. I mean, like look, look, we look at like the people that are completely out of the comfort zone, like David Goggins and stuff like that as motivating factors for me, at least I always watch his videos and uh, I'm just like, like, dude, this guy is like pushing the human limit. He's like in every single aspect and and everything he does, he he pushes like the human limit. And it like, it really stretches my mind to see like, like, dude, we're not meant to sit in one spot and like, like get used to something and get comfortable with it. And then just be like, okay, cool. This is my thing for the rest of my life. That sounds boring as hell. Um, so, like, I, uh, I've i been seeking, like, discomfort, um, especially with, like, 75 Hard. Yuri, Yuri got me hooked on Andy Frisella, uh last year and got us hooked on 75 Hard. And that's one of the, the key attributes to uh, to getting out of the comfort zone for us. Yeah. What would you say? Um, I don't know, man. My brain can't think today. Um, shit, what's new? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I think there's something definitely to be said about yeah. the comfort zone being tied in with like dependent, being dependent on things. So like, I feel like society, um, the things we consume, the people we rely on definitely, uh, form this like dependency environment. So, like, you know, the government is moving more and more towards people depending on them. Um, all these, like, uh, consumer products, you know, way more convenient. Something that's, like, custom tailored to people being as comfortable as possible. It's just, yeah. like, yeah. it just, like, molds this society to be, like, lazy way too, hell. yeah, like, way it's, too it's lazy. <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, when you look at it. Like, dude, I'm all for convenience. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm I'm all for it. Like, if I'm sick or if I'm, like if we're just ex- like tired or something, I'll order some pizza or DoorDash or something like that. But like, every single thing has become so 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 convenient in our lives. Amazon Prime with their two hour delivery now. Like, dude, you don't even step into a car and go to the store anymore. And uh, and like DoorDash and all these different businesses and different things catering to everyone's needs and don't get me wrong like that's what society wants because it's convenient but yeah if, if it's convenient like for productivity that's good like if it's efficient you yeah know, it makes you no, more productive I mean, why not yeah no absolutely but it's kind of like shaped us in shaped us in a sense <laughs> to think the, like it's it's truly shaped us to think like instant gratification like Amazon delivery is two hours now this and this is quicker this and this and this is quicker and like people start thinking like bro like the hard things in life 
are supposed to come quickly and like these good things in life that follow you like busting your ass and you always being like getting out of the comfort zone like like dude we're, we're shaped to think that they come out so like they come quickly like nothing comes easy and uh yeah man i think a big part of um what we learned last year that has to do with this is that nobody's coming to save us and it's just us they got to take care of our crap um and i think that's what forces you out of the comfort zone too yeah no, absolutely because you know if you're if you're if you're sitting there comfortably or you know expecting somebody to to take care of your bills or you know take care of your future or you know help you out or something like that then you'll be you'll be disappointed and waiting forever yeah no 100 so. percent. i think that 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 was mine and yours biggest takeaway of like the last six months then literally no one is coming to save you like like your parents are there to help you and like your like your friends are there to help you as much as they can but like truthfully everyone has their own life that they're worried about and everyone's concerned about their own well-being and at the at, at the end of the day like no one is coming to help you no one like no one and like people are so conditioned to think like Oh, the government is here to help us and like, oh, we get like this financial aid and this and this and this. And like, bro, that keeps everyone so content with living like this little, little life. Like, like their dreams go to die because their bills are covered by the government and they no longer have to work. And like they get conditioned and conditioned into that lazy mentality and there's no good outcome. Like there's no good long term outcome for it. Not at all. Do you think there's a good long term outcome with with metaverse that you're so so sold on? <laughs> no. Um I uh no, I uh the metaverse thing. No. I uh I think that in in certain aspects they uh they'll make it very convenient for people working at home and different things like that. You can join meetings and stuff like that. But I don't want I like I want nothing to do with the metaverse where in a sense that how like this agenda that they're pushing, like like you're you're like new reality is in these goggles and your body is like suffering you don't go to the gym you're barely taking care of yourself but you're consuming all these things in like a virtual world and your like actual world is crumbling and like i think that that's like there's, there's a limit to it but they're already pushing that limit it's um, an attention grab man oh it is it is these companies are just a p uh, competing for your attention pretty much yeah it, it, they are in like at, at, at what point do you have like any clarity in your life because you're like all damn day you're consuming tiktoks and youtube and all this stuff on your phone like li looking at listening to your boss doing all the stuff on work and like like and then coming home and like going through your phone again and like and then going to bed and waking up doing it all over again like at what point does it like yeah, my cousin calls it brain present? rotting activity. I <laughs> I, I agree with that, dude. I I mean, I agree with that. Like, at what point do we just like throw our phone to the ground and just like, hey, I'm gonna go step outside and go for a jog, or I'm gonna go get some fresh air with my wife, or like, yeah, but see, but doing that stuff's not comfortable though. Yeah, dude. Like, I guess it. I guess it all correlates with everyone's ambitions for this life. Like, 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 dude, we have one life. Like one life and it's it's flying by every single year we say damn this year flew by dang it's already january dang it's already like february what, like whatever it is every single month every single year every day we do this and like dude our life is flying by we have one life like one like what is the point of being so comfortable what if someone's someone's content being comfortable like like I said, it all it all correlates with your ambitions. Like if you want if you want to live a life where it's very 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 simple, and all you do is work, sleep, eat, consume on your phone, go for it. And in all reality, that's that's the life majority of people are living, and that's the life that is the easiest. That's literally the easiest life. Like you like you don't have to do nothing. Out of the ordinary, you just consume a bunch of BS and just do what you're told to do. And like, at what point are you like, yo, I have all these different things I like. I like these different hobbies. I like, like stepping out of my comfort zone and like trying something else. Like, like at what point are you doing something exciting that's worth living? Boris, how do you balance that? Because, you know, you're like a big proponent of using social media, you know, have a... Yeah. Uh, like a dwelling on social media yeah you know interacting with 
uh, people or absolutely it's powerful like things right so how do you balance that between leaving it alone and focusing on like productivity and yourself and whatnot? so how i find my balance is i've really realized what i wanted to do and who i wanted to become and i realized there's two things there's either a producer or a consumer and 95 percent plus of people in this world are consumers everyone that scrolls through tiktok scrolls through whatever all damn day that's consumers producers are the one that take these, this valuable input that they get into their life and exert it into a video, exert it into like some TikTok, something to benefit someone and put it out there to try to shape someone else's mind or sh- try to shape someone else's lifestyle. Um, and I think that the big difference is like me, like me becoming, tr- trying to become like the creator in a sense and just trying to put stuff out there like, hey, this, this works for me. This has helped improve my health, improve my life, improve this. Um, and so there's, I mean, Consuming versus producing, um, I guess that's the biggest difference right there. So what do you say to someone who's a consumer but wants to live the life that a producer lives? Get out of your comfort zone, baby. No, like, really, the reality, like, the reality is, like, dude, like, all these people, like, scroll through, like, their stuff, their feed, and they see all these people's lives, and they're, and then automatically they, like, dang, like, my life sucks. They compare themselves and they see someone's highlight of their life and and like they 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 don't they have zero clue like they see like a, like a popular video trending or something like that like all like a, the, the authentic people that are actually crushing it like they see that but they don't see like that person has made like 2000 videos to get up to that point he has got he's gone through all these trainings all these courses all these programs to get there um, so like like nothing comes easy. Like, yeah, I mean, dude, putting a camera in front of your face and talking itself is, is, is truly hard. Like that's what I've had to overcome in the last six months. And like, yeah, dude, if you want to become the, the producer in a sense, like stop consuming all this crap and start exploiting your own life and, and tell people something interesting about you, something beneficial about your life that can improve others. Shouldn't yeah, like, it's uh yeah it's crazy to me man what if someone's life is interesting or they don't think that it's that it's interesting everyone's unique in their own way and provides some i believe that everyone's unique in their own way and provides some kind of value to someone else everyone everyone from a different upbringing from a different something someone has a piece of knowledge that i don't have and if they became creators and started becoming producers i could i can consume that and be like damn that's something new it's a different perspective to look at things um let me like and let me input that into my life and see what changes you know like every single person can start from nothing and have a huge following and make a huge impact within a year like everyone every single person can go from zero to a million in a year what are the chances of that what are the bro like i don't know statistically speaking but your chances if you don't do it and consume all your life are zero like yeah, what kind point. of odds are those you know like yeah if, was, if you if you dedicate enough time if you put in enough effort um and make it a priority um you know you might not get two million but you'll get you get get uh, uh, uh i was pretty close to it so i mean dude i don't know i just think that doing the things that get us out of our comfort zone like dude it's just i think we all need to have that like excitement in our life that, like to do something scary to do something like like every other day like trying something new like what is the point of life if every single day is the same and i make zero impact and i make zero progress and i make zero like straight up progress towards my goals like what's the point like we're just getting old and rotting away you're saying that we'll be seeing a lot more polls of you on instagram asking if uh Swiss cheese is the best cheese. Yeah, right. Nah, dude. <laughs> nah, uh, what pe- uh, cheese was that? It's pepper jack, bro. Oh, pepper jack cheese. Yeah. No, nah, dude. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy, man. There's just a, it's a lot to it. You're tell me something that you did that that got you out of the something that you're scared of that you went full throttle in and got out of your comfort zone to do. Starting business with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome no, for that one. There's a lot of stuff, man, but it's it's not <clears throat> the 
the scary part is, you know, already, already over. I already got over that hurdle, I think. Um, I don't think anything's scary to me anymore, um, in a sense, because, you know, it's the way I see it is loss of opportunity or um, uh, not starting is sometimes scarier than, than actually going out and doing something. I agree. Know? So, yeah. to me, you know, I don't think anything, in a sense, is scary anymore. Bro, you know, it's either you just tell you, us one thing. You just learn, learn. Stop giving you that spiel. Give us one thing that you did recently that got you out of the comfort zone that you did, and you're like, dang, like, that was terrifying, but I did it. Dang, putting me on the spot, man. This, yeah. This what's called isn't it? Um, isn't the the episode for it, man? Yeah, it's all right. Ah, <sighs> besides personal stuff that I'm not gonna share in here. Um, but what's called definitely hiring an employee yeah was definitely a scary thing um i mean knowing that you're 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 responsible for somebody else's livelihood and well-being not just your own yeah you know is is scary but it's terrifying you know it's it, it definitely makes you grow to new levels and realize thing, things about yourself and keep growing yeah so how about you boris no that's a really good one i uh yeah hiring steve was truly scary um like truly terrifying i meant you but uh, <laughs> yeah good one um what's it called so one Steve also yeah yeah one thing yeah you wish i worked for you um what's it called one thing i did in the last year uh, that i got I stepped out of my comfort zone i mean recently is comfort uh is uh is, is content creation and doing all this but that's nothing new. So I think that one of the scariest, scariest, scariest th things I've done and that completely got me out of my comfort zone is was going scuba diving. Like, like, dude, scuba diving is terrifying. Like for me, at least I, uh, like I went down to the bottom of the ocean. I, it, like me and my wife went, she's like, she was like a rock star about it. She, did, she wasn't scared of, of anything. And like, I was like, dude, like it's scary. Cause like, it's all new to you. And you spend all day training and doing all this crap. And then, and then you go to the ocean and like, dude, the ocean is terrifying. Like, it, like the ocean's terrifying, but like you get, you get, you go 10 feet down, your ears start hurting. You go another 10 feet down, your ears like start popping more. You got to like do all that stuff. And then you get, you get to the bottom. Dude, I remember hitting the bottom of the ocean. Like my, like my flippers hitting the bottom of the ocean, me standing down. And, uh, and me looking around. So I was like, I was like, I was not even like, I was freaking out all the way down. So I was like, just looking down, 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 down. As soon as I hit the bottom, I look around, dude, terrifying, terrifying. It was like the most claustrophobic feeling in the world. Even though the ocean's so big, I felt so like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if it's like the pressure or what it was, but like, you felt so like, I don't know. I didn't like that feeling. So I swam right away up and uh, I went down again. I was, I was like, man, I just paid all this money. I'm not going to go do it again. I'm not going to miss out on it. But like, dude, that was freaking terrifying for me, at least. I don't know. Scuba diving is pretty fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> serious? <laughs> no, dude. I've gone. I don't like Took it. A class in college. Yeah, I don't like it. It's not for everyone. Yeah. I don't know, man. No, and I'm, dude, and one other thing, I remember, I remember you can't breathe with your nose, like you're not getting any oxygen. So I remember, dude, I hit the bottom, I started breathing with my nose, started freaking out. And like, I, f like, I forgot how to like function. And like, I just started swimming up, freaking out, like panicking. Worst thing ever, not going scuba diving again, but probably will because I got to step out of my comfort zone, you know? Yeah. Steve, how about you? Yeah. When you're was used to something. scuba dive in high school, right? <laughs> No, in college you took a class. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. What's what's a uh, moment when you stepped out of your outside of your comfort this zone? This year or last year, I mean? Yeah, it's whenever. Recently, whenever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've never really been like too uncomfortable in the recent past. Well, I guess it's time for us to change that. Yeah, board. I know. I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? You, that I was like your a, lot of, a lot of social encounters, especially like when it's. I don't know, man. Just social encounters in general. I guess I'm a very introverted person, so... I feel that. Uh, it's kind of scary, you know, meeting new people or uh, proposing, like, new ideas or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say the scariest time was when I ran a five-high bluff against Yuri with a <laughs> middle pair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> yeah. 
That's crazy. Nobody knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a cryptic Those language there. Um, <laughs> if nah, you know, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, guys. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Well, share share your guys' uh, getting outside comfort zone stories. We'd love to hear them. Um, maybe the person who shares the best one will have you guys as a guest on the podcast. Talk Absolutely. More. I would love that. But we'll see. Yeah. Well, anyways, Happy New Year to you guys. Uh, hope your, your year is off to a strong start. Um, we're doing things a lot differently this year. Um, have a lot of different goals and plans. Um, so I'm um, excited for you guys to be part of that journey and see. Follow along. But yep. I guess uh, see you guys next week. See you guys on the next one. Hey,